Hi everyone, welcome back to Peace Garage. Now today we are going to install and tune a carburetor on a Ford Inline 6 in the 65 Mustang. But first we have to choose the correct carburetor, the correct spacer, and the correct gasket. Now before I get started, I have to say hello to someone on the other side of the world. I'm in New York and there's a nice young lady named Pearl who lives in Cape Shank, Victoria, Australia. She was in love with my shop security Shelby who passed away a couple years ago, but I do have new shop security and his name is Frank. Frank, say hi to Pearl. That's my shop security right there. Frank says hi Pearl. Now before you choose a carburetor and spacer for your inline six, you have to know what size it is obviously. Smaller engine, smaller carburetor. This 1965 Mustang originally came with a 200 cubic inch engine, inline six, which had an Autolite 1100 carburetor. The Venturi size carb opening on that was one inch, 1.1 or 1.2 inches. Now, some time during the life of this car, someone changed the engine. It is still a straight six, but it's a 68 block out of a Falcon and a 69 cylinder head out of Falcon, which makes it a 240. That means I need a different carburetor. The 240 straight six took either an 1101 carburetor, a YF, or an RBS carburetor, which has a 111 16 opening, which is substantially larger. Now, I had an 1100 on this carburetor, an Autolite 1100, and I could not get it to idle at all. The idle circuit didn't work, and I had to use it because of the spacer that was on there. But let me show you what I had on there, why it didn't work, and we'll put a new carburetor on. Now this is the Autolite 1100 carburetor I had on the car. And this is the spacer that matches up with this carburetor. And this is what's important here. On the bottom of the carburetor there's a real small orifice. And this is for the idle control circuit. It's controlled by your idle mixture screw right here, the idle mixture screw. And this is what allows air to flow when your butterfly is closed. It allows air to flow into the engine controlled by this mixture screw. You can see that the spacer for this engine. This is the spacer for a 200. This spacer has a groove and this groove in here lines up with that Venturi hole. So when I put these two together like that you can see the hole here. This hole lines up with that groove and that would allow air, if you, if you can see on the inside, that would allow air to pass from the Venturi into the carburetor allowing the idle mixture to be controlled with that screw. I was using the spacer for the engine that I have, which is a 240, which is this spacer. And you can see that, uh, first of all, the bore size is different. You can see inside there, see how big that this bore is here compared to the carburetor. So the carburetor is too small for the engine, which didn't help. But this spacer does not have the groove for the idle control circuit. So when you put these two together, like that, the idle control circuit was blocked off. That is why it idled terrible and I could not adjust the idle at all. Now this is the YF carburetor I got from Max Speeding Rods. Okay, full disclosure, Max Speeding Rods did send me this carburetor to try out. You should check out their website. They have warehouses in the United States, Germany, France, the Czech Republic, United Kingdom, Australia. They all ship within 24 hours. And their best selling products are connecting rods, coilovers, and turbos, but they also have other auto parts like this carburetor. Um, their connecting rods actually come with mesh ARP bolts, which is uh, pretty awesome. The ARP fasteners are top grade fasteners. And uh, they're already sponsoring some of the well-known racers uh, in the world, like there's a uh, Drift Masters European Championships, uh, Dwayne McEver, they sponsored in the 2019 British Drift Champion. Uh, Oliver Evans they sponsored. In the United States, France, Portugal, Italy, Denmark, and Latvia, they have also sponsored local events. So check out their website. I do have a link in the description of the video with a discount code for you. This is a YF carburetor. And a couple things you can see that are different right away. The YF carburetor, if I match up the choke, the chokes, you can see, first of all, the top is different. The size of this is different, which means it gets a different size air cleaner. This throat here 
is smaller for the stock air cleaner that would have would come on a Mustang or 65 Mustang, which means I can't use the same air cleaner because this is different. But since there's a 240 cylinder head in there, I need to use the YF style carburetor, which I have here. Uh, this is not an electric choke, which is what I want. Uh, and you can see the difference is the bottom of this carburetor has two ports in here for this idle mixture screw right here. And that's what I need for this spacer. This spacer right here doesn't have the groove in there. So when I put these two together, this will actually go this way. When I put these two together, I don't have to worry about the idle mixture circuit getting into the uh, throat of the carburetor because it's grooved into the bottom of the carburetor itself right there. When I, whoops, that was close, good catch. When I put these two together, now I don't have to worry about that. The air will come in through here and I'll be able to adjust the idle. Now, if you are putting on an Autolite 1100 carburetor on your inline six, this is the spacer that goes on it. I don't have the part number, but all you have to do is, is uh, do an online search for carb spacers for an inline six, 200, and you'll find this fairly easy. And this is the correct Felpro part number. Get, uh, it comes with two gaskets. When I purchased this, it came with two gaskets. Here's the part number for your Felpro. Okay, now first things first, question do you have to put any sealant on the intake manifold before you install your gasket and the answer is no the reason I say no is because if you want to take this on and off you'll have to pull off the gasket scrape the intake manifold and, it, and it's a pain so you don't have to do that I use it all the time without having any sealant and it works just fine if you do use sealant don't use silicone the silicone is going to get uh, uh, dissolve, it's going to fall apart, it might get sucked in the engine, so silicone's not good. Use something like high tech or right stuff, something that stays uh, soft and applicable. So you put your first gasket on, and then I'm going to put my spacer on here. And the spacer, as you can see, is, is offset to compensate for the engine being off. The uh, carburetor being angled a little bit here, and that's the way it's put on. And I'm just going to tighten these down. And I'm not going to put a ton of torque on here, you know, hand, God, at the most, probably five foot-pounds at the most, two to five, just to, just to secure it. Okay, now, now it'll be sealed just fine. And this gasket, uh, I'm sorry, the spacer is the same size opening as the hole inside the intake manifold. Here's a difference. This is what a 240 cylinder head looks like, the runners look like. And this is what a 200 cubic inch engine looks like. You can see the runners are different and that's what makes the cylinder heads different. Next is the gasket that goes between the spacer and the carburetor. And when you buy uh, the carburetor, it may come with gaskets. Uh, they'll be a little thicker. This carburetor gasket should be a little thicker. Uh, the reason you use a thicker gasket here is because you want a little bit of uh, space in between the spacer intake manifold and the carburetor. A thicker gasket gives you a little more uh, insulation so the carburetor doesn't heat up. Now I'm going to install the carburetor and again I'm not using any sealants. If you do you want to make sure you don't put any sealant in the passageways for the idle control circuit or the idle circuit for the air. You don't want to put any coolant in, or any uh, sealant in there. Again, you don't want to use a ton of force because you don't want to warp the carburetor. You don't want to bend the base. They're fairly easy to bend. So just put it on there until you feel it bottom out. Tighten up the nut until it stops. And just, just, just lightly tighten it down. We can always check for leaks later, but you don't want to over tighten these gaskets, that's for sure. And that should be enough. Now I just put my EGR hose back on. I'll put my fitting on here and I'll hook up my fuel line. Now to get started with the tuning, I'm simply going to close the idle mixture screw all the way, close it all the way, and I'll open it up two turns. One, two, let's start it up.
Now for tuning, all I'm going to do is do it with a vacuum gauge. I have it hooked up to a port here where I have full manifold vacuum, that's important, and the engine is all warmed up, the choke is fully open. So I'm going to start it up, and I'm going to turn in the idle mixture screw, or leaning out the idle mixture, until I get up to about 20 inches of vacuum. the vacuum and I don't want to go any further because it'll be running lean so I'll leave it right there. Now these Ford inline sixes run awesome and if you're working on them and you need to change the carburetor you need the right spacer all you really need to know is the year of the intake manifold or the cylinder head you just need to know the vehicle it came out of and then you can choose the carburetor. It's easiest if you measure the port inside the intake manifold, measure the hole where the carburetor goes, so you know what size carburetor and what size spacer to get. Telling the difference between a 200, a 240, a 250, and a 300 can be difficult at times. Just take a little research, uh, do a little research online, you'll find the right parts, and uh, when, you, when it runs, the, it runs awesome. Took it to a drive, carburetor performance excellent. Thanks for stopping by Pizza Raj.